Welcome back people, I'm Double Six. Today I'm gonna talk about black femininity. So let's get straight into this one. The men who struggle to build society, who clean the sewers, who ride the buses, who fix the cars, who build the roads, who build bridges, who work in power stations, seafarers, oil rigging man. We're not getting no boost in society. The radical feminist movement are trying to suppress masculinity and I'm not having it. He was a big man in like underwear, bra, just complete expressing himself high heels like, but he was tripping over the high heels and fumbling on the high heels. They're not interested in promoting a clean cut image of a black man like me. Listen, I'm done with this woman. My name is T if you're new here. So today I wanna, oh, and I hope you're having a good day. <laughs> Dang, where are my manners? I was just about to jump straight up in that bit, huh? Today I wanna talk about gender norms and constructs, specifically amongst African American men. But ultimately, today's video is to celebrate those who have dared to go against it. You can easily scroll down my For You page on TikTok or my Explore page on Instagram and find many fanboys who are being celebrated and even lusted after. And for those of you who are unaware, a fanboy is the urban term to describe feminine presenting men. So guys who wear crop tops, guys who paint their nails, guys who dye their hair crazy colors, guys who constantly challenge the criterion of masculinity unrelated to sexual orientation. But on the outside world, because of the internalized that is woven so deep and runs so rampant within our community, it's a completely different story. So hold on a minute, people. First of all, we've just learned the term a fanboy. A fanboy must be one of these boys here, yeah? So they challenge masculinity. It's got nothing to do with their sexuality. So they what? They paint their nails, they wear dresses, they wear crop tops. Uh, okay, so they're free to wear what they want to wear. No problem with that, but now we learn that they're called fanboys. I, I, I didn't know that. Fanboys are not allowed to just be. They are expected to conform or face hostility, sometimes even violence from our community. I'm specifically referring to the perception of masculinity in African American popular culture. African American popular culture. My findings may reflect some similarities amongst other demographics, but I just want to be clear on who I'm referring to because that's specifically who I did research on for this video. So I was reading an online article. Y'all know I love me some online articles. This one is called Addressing Masculine Norms to Improve Life Outcomes for Young Black Men, Why We Still Can't Wait by Ricky Wilchins and Micah Gilmay. I do apologize if there was any mispronunciation. And on the fourth page, they begin to explain how across many cultures, as we grow, we are taught gender norms. We know this, right? And as we enter into late adolescence slash early adulthood, these gender norms go through an intensification stage. In this stage, young black boys would be expected to exhibit acts of hypermasculinity, such as enhanced physical strength, increased sexual conquest, and their success in this performance so when boys are growing up, you're saying they go through hyper masculinity because we want to work out, keep in shape, and we want to look young. No, that's not hyper masculinity. That's just bog standard masculinity. They signify their rite of passage into manhood. So that was a lot of words. So let's just put it into simple terms. It's one big fucking performance. It was all a lie. Guys, it was all a lie. She lied. But don't leave me. Don't leave me. There's still more. Because hip hop, R&B, and other forms of the media emphasize these expectations, and even in today's world of the influencer, there are rewards offered for people who are able to put on this facade of meeting the ideals of hypermasculinity, it can seem like it's only getting worse with time. But even if a black man is willing or brave enough to step outside of these gender norms, it's harder for the black community to publicly accept or respect it because <laughs> Look, no matter how conscious everybody claims to be, no matter how woke everybody claims to be, nine times out of 10, if you dig deep enough, you can always find a little bit of leftover homophobia. Many biases go unchecked. This is why when we see black heterosexual male celebrities such as Dennis Rodman, Prince, Lil Uzi Vert, Young Thug, going against the black heteronormative, the community is in shambles, in complete shambles. They don't know what to do with themselves. Hold on, hold on. We are in complete shambles when we see fanboys because the media wants to take these images of black men 
and promote them aggressively through society. They don't take a standard image of a black man like me, just bog standard black man, go gym, keep fit, look gal when I can, work hard, look after my family. They're not interested in promoting a clean cut image of a black man like me. They're only interested in promoting and perpetuating fanboys. They want to feminize the genders. If a you wants to wear a crop top, like we don't care. But if that's the image that you're promoting or as black man promoting as a man, then we do care and we do get upset. These men who are widely respected, some may even say idolized by straight black men, also, also very sexually desired by women are still prospering. So long story short, niggas is confused. They, they don't get it, it's not clicking. Take Dennis Rodman for example. You mean to tell me. This man changes his hair color like every other day. He wears nail polish, he wears dresses, and he still plays basketball? And he's still rich and famous? And was very often seen getting cozy with some of the hottest hotties of the 90s? Ah, uh-uh. Wait a damn minute. <laughs> What? Damn. He was also one of the first straight black male celebrities to publicly and shamelessly promote the idea that sexuality is indeed a spectrum. He didn't say those words exactly, but it was the idea. So you are I remember Dennis Rodman when I was a youth, yeah? Chicago Bulls, I used to wear the t-shirt, used to wear the hat. I remember he used to paint his nails, wear earrings, wear funny nose rings, wear wedding dresses. I think he was married to Madonna at one time. We don't business about none of that because he played basketball and he was a top spec basketball player. That's all we care about is performance. We don't care if you perform in a skirt, in a wedding dress, in a hat, with painted nails. We just care about results. You're not pushing the Michael Jordan, who's the Sigma male, the alpha on the team. You're not pushing his image out, you're pushing Dennis Rodman in a wedding dress. That's what we don't like. Can't you understand that the radical feminist movement are trying to suppress masculinity through the media and I'm not having it. Okay. You're saying to me you are not gay. No, no, and if you were gay, I believe you would tell me. I think so. I think so. <laughs> so are you bisexual? No. In this book you say that maybe in your mind you are. Yeah. What does yeah. that mean? I can float with the idea. You can float with the idea. I can float with it, float with it, however you want to look at it. I can do anything I want. Uh -huh. up here. Wait, wait. First of all, the way I slowly started to be seductive by him, like, the way he slowly started to seduce me. I need to get off of TikTok. No, I'm joking. Well, and don't get me wrong, I am not the biggest Dennis Rodman fan. He is known to have a very problematic past. However... 1996 Dennis Rodman in that interview he also mentioned a time where he was on the brink of suicide and he realized that instead of killing himself what he really needed to do was kill the imposter the man he was trying to be and once he was able to do that he blossomed into the Dennis Rodman we know and that's especially important because there are black boys actually losing their lives over their failure to upkeep this imposter. If it wasn't for Dennis Rodman being a superstar, one of the greatest forwards of all time, he likely would have been one of those slain black boys. And all he wanted to do was wear a dress. Now let's move on to the legend himself, Prince. In 1993, Prince underwent a name change to this love symbol as described in his 1996 Oprah interview, this emblem was a combination of the male and female gender icons. Prince was a pioneer, an absolute pioneer. Because while we saw many rock stars such as Elton John push the envelope with their fashion, we were yet to see the same come from a black male celebrity. Again, pioneer. His expression in particular was especially interesting to me because I realized he wasn't just a feminine presenting man that was trying to flip the script and be different. He was just a human being living in his essence, whatever. Let me pause. This woman doesn't understand that the media is trying to demasculate the masses of men in society. The men who struggle to build society, who clean the sewers, who ride the buses, who fix the cars, who build the roads, who build bridges, who work in coal mines, who work in power stations, seafarers, oil rigging man. These hard working men are not getting no recognition in society. We're not getting no boost in society. They're trying to demasculate the masses of men by forcing this black feminine agenda upon us. And we're saying, have that, have that over there. We don't mind that. We got no problem 
with black feminine men. But don't try to push that as that's how all men should be. Leave us to be masculine and leave the black feminine men to be black feminine. But don't try to push that narrative onto the masses. It's just that simple. I want to share a quote from a 2016 NBC Black article. I don't know. I guess NBC Black is the black side of NBC News. Yeah, anyway, it's titled How Prince Redefined Masculinity Through His Music on Stage. The quote reads, He gave others permission to be genuinely and authentically themselves. He bent gender norms and identity expression during the time when some black male artists paraded their masculinity into success. I'll be sure. Teddy Pendergrass, Alexander O'Neill, Keith Sweat. Each of these artists were considered ladies men and fit the stereotypical mold of black male masculinity. And then you had Prince. End quote. So Prince was a man who was small in stature, remarkably expressive, and extremely erotic. Oh my goodness. He had these women practically foaming at the mouth. That's how bad, that's how bad they wanted a piece of the Prince. And I could only imagine that this desire to tap into the mystique of Prince was only intensified with the release of his... Listen, I'm done with this woman. She just don't get and understand the levels where we're coming from. Now, I heard her say it earlier in the video, but I didn't want to pause it where she said that when black men are expressing their femininity, they also experience extreme violence from the community. Let me check something, yeah? I remember when I was growing up, South London, Brixton, there was one man, he was a, what do you call it? Transvestite, but people now call it trans, transgender, yeah? But back in the days, he was called transvestite. Basically a man who dressed as a woman. He was a big man, like about, you know, six foot two, he was big. And he used to walk up and down Brixton Hill for years in like underwear, bra, wig, just complete expressing himself high heels like, but he was tripping over the high heels and fumbling on the high heels. And as youths, yeah, like we were little vicious black boys on the road them times, yeah, and we just used to like went and laugh at the most. Nobody never troubled that man. You might like say, oi, or hey, or whatever, or make a little sound to him, like for him to wave back, get his attention, but nobody troubled him. Nobody threw a stone at him. Nobody said a bad word to him. You know why? Because we're like, if he was to walk down the road in a thong, a bra, six inch heels and a lopsided wig on his head that's his business leave him if he thinks he looks good leave him alone there's also some next black man i see him on the whatsapp a couple years ago he used to walk around peckham in skirt and cowboy boots and hat and people leave him alone people film him and put it on the whatsapp and share it around that's how i get to see it but people are not interested in the man being feminine that's his expression of himself and he's entitled to feel that way nobody wants to put no violence against the man so i don't know what this woman is talking about that they expect experience violence you know I'm a victim blamer like first thing I have to do is ask what did the person do you understand in order to get any violence against them but I know growing up in South London we didn't give no violence to no transgender transvestite people I don't identify with nothing that this woman is saying but the problem I have is that the media is trying to push the narrative that masculinity is now toxic they're trying to describe masculinity bog standard masculinity of just working out keeping fit looking for women you know trying to be vi a virile our young man as hyper masculinity when it's not it's just bog standard masculinity so i don't like this version that media is trying to perpetuate as black man just leave normal man alone we ain't got no problem with black man that want to be feminine but don't have a problem with black man that want to be masculine like that's what equality is all about isn't it don't try to put one person's situation over another i'm double six catch me on the next one peace out